everyone, my name is Skalti and today we're going to look at how I run my cabling through my factories to power up all of my machines. And I know this question has been asked a few times and so I wanted to make sure that I addressed it and especially with the most recent update that came out allowing us to put the wall outlet attachments underneath foundations. Uh, this is the best time more now than ever to cover this to ensure that your factories are nice and clean beyond just their layout, but also how you're powering them too. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. First off, what you're going to need is from the awesome shop here underneath the attachments panel. You can see that we have the wall power outlets Mark 1, Mark 2, and Mark 3. If you only have the Mark 1 power pools unlocked, you will only see the Mark 1 wall power outlets available in the awesome shop. And as you unlock the other Mark II and Mark III power poles, these will become available for you as well. Now these do use the Fix-It coupons, and these are acquired by putting items into the awesome sink. And I do have another guide on how to get coupons early on in the game, so that way your factories from a very early stage of your playthrough can be nice and clean as I show in my guides. So that's how you acquire them. Now let's look at how I exactly use them. So we can go ahead and head inside here. And so first and foremost, there's a couple of different ways to do it. And I'll go over this one at the end here. But essentially, the power would come in from the outside and by putting the wall outlets onto the foundations underneath the sandwich layer, it allows us to keep any kind of horizontal cabling nice and tidy to the bottom of the actual foundations here. And what I do is I align the single-sided wall outlet as close to vertically centered with wherever it's going to be connecting to the machines. So this here is our smelter. And so you can see here that I have it relatively straight above it and connected. And then I just take that cable and I run it over to the next smelter in the line and repeat the process as needed. Now this is one step. This will likely end up happening with your Mark 1 wall power outlets because you can only have four connections at a time. But as you unlock the higher Mark versions, you'll be able to connect more cables to those specific wall power outlets. And so on this next floor up, you can potentially do something like this that we have here, where we have our row of five constructors here, all connected to a single wall outlet that is attached to the top here. And that just saves a little bit on resources. I wouldn't say it saves too much on how much cable you're using because the cable spans are longer, but this is an option if you so choose. And when it comes to moving power from one floor to the other, what we do is over here, especially because I have the glass walls on the outside of the factory, what I try and do is I keep the wall outlets in line with these white cross sections between the glass from the outside of the glass, depending on how you look at it. And I essentially just run that cable up to the next floor and bring it over as close to the bottom of the next foundation over as I can, as you can see here and then just run it however I need it. And then for the top floor of the factory, you just bring that up and then we mount it directly to the ceiling and we bring it straight over. And again, keeping it as vertically centered over the item below it or the machine below it that's receiving the cable. And that's pretty much it. Now when it comes to the bus system uh, on this factory, and this is the 30 encased seal beams per minute factory, I just recently a guide out for this if you guys are watching as i'm releasing these videos but i have these bus lines that go all the way out to the miners and so they have these power cables that are connected to it so any, essentially the power is being routed into the factory and then from that factory we are powering up the miners uh, via these bus networks or belt trains that we have set up now when these come into the factory i'll go back to that first wall outlet that i had shown here if I just delete this wall. So you can see that this one is here and this is connected up into this one. And you know, again, just keeping it as vertically centered as possible and out of the way. But if we come down below and ignore all the belting, this wall outlet connects right here into this power pole in the center. And then this one goes off to our limestone nodes. This one over here goes to our iron, as you can see coming into the factory. And then if we go to the other end, you'll see that this is coming in from our coal nodes. And so those just go to the outside. I can come down here and probably get a little bit of a look. And those just go to the outside 
using the double-sided wall outlets and those just run in between the belts all the way up to the miners and it is what's feeding those power. So that's essentially how I do it. I would strongly encourage you guys to go out and acquire uh, some complex components to go ahead and throw into your awesome sink here and get some early points to purchase the wall outlets, the glass walls, the wall conveyor walls, etc. But long story short, that's exactly how I run all my cabling inside of my factory to keep the overall appearance a little easy on the eyes. So with that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope it was insightful. And if it was, feel free to leave a like. If you want to see more content in the future, go ahead and subscribe if you are not already. And if you have any questions or if there's any comments that you want to reach out to me about, maybe ask me a question or whatnot, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But with that, thank you guys for watching. Take care.